Welcome you two to another awesome episode of The Culture of Currency. Today we will be diving into a coin that has become cherished in my collection for its beauty and overall design. We are talking about the Royal Coat of Arms from Great Britain. This coin is a 2019, but it really matters not seeing as the design stays pretty consistent through the series. Let's get into what the Royal Arms are and why they are identifiable to Great Britain. After that, we will place it on our scale. If you study the practice of heraldry, you will know that during the medieval age, it was a custom to have noblemen's houses, or really even their last names, in symbolic representation. This was in the form of colors, shapes, animals, and plants. An example of this would be King Richard I. He is the monarch noted for solidifying the lion as part of the heraldry of England. Now every English coat of arms has to have a lion in some form or fashion. Today we are talking about the coat of arms of Great Britain. Great Britain is a large chunk of the United Kingdom and encompasses England, Scotland, and Wales, as well as a couple of the surrounding small islands. I recommend you watch my Britannia coin video if you want to go into more information about Britain as a whole. We think that the name of Great Britain goes back to the works of the legendary scientist Ptolemy, who referred to the larger island as Great and the smaller island as we know as Ireland now as smaller. This is why Great was added to Britain. The coat of arms we see was derived in the year 1706 as a union formed politically between the two nations of England and Scotland, which was ratified in 1707 in the Acts of Union. This merged both parliaments and formed Great Britain. It is noted that a personal union of the two nations existed from a treaty struck by King James VI of Scotland and King James I of England in the Baroque period, but the acts of the union were the official legislation that bound the two. Now that we know what inspired the royal arms, let's get into what we see when we look at it. There are many variations on this theme, but the coin is the one we are referencing, so let's take a look at that and use it as our guide. We have the mint year, 2019 surrounding the royal crown. I believe this particular crown to be the crown of St. Edward's, but don't hold me accountable if it's not. We have on the outskirts the royal lion and unicorn. The lion is representative like we've talked about of England. And while the unicorn on the other side represents Scotland, you've seen these represented in the Queen's Beast series. In between the two beasts, is a garter circlet with the Latin words that translate to shame on he who thinks evil on it. We also see the banner that has some Latin translating to God and my right, which as legend has it was yelled as a war cry by King Richard I as he was ascending onto the field of battle. Directly under the garter we have the Leeks of Wales, which is a nation state within England uh, kind of like the Holy See of the Vatican is within Italy. On the shield itself, we have four quadrants. Quadrant 1 and 4 host the Lions of England, while Quadrant 2 hosts the Lion of Wales that is usually red and yellow, and on Quadrant 3, that would be the Harp of Ireland. Northern Ireland is politically included at times, and it is my guess to why it's on this shield, but not technically a part of Great Britain. Now that we understand the arms, let's put this coin to our 60 point scale. The front of this coin is about as beautiful as you can ask for, for a queen centered coin. It's basically the same as the lunar rat which scored a 7, so I think this has to follow suit and score a 7. The back of this coin is absolutely beautiful and balanced. There is not a shred of negative space and we see the radiant beams in the background encompassing the royal arms in the foreground. I think this is beyond well done and a staple of how you can make a statement with a coat of arms. I give that a 10. Mintage is our next category. I cannot seem to find anything on mintage amounts, but know that they are incredibly high due to the offering of monster boxes as a means of purchase. Being as I cannot find a number, I will have to give it a 5 until the information I require is produced. We now move on to cultural significance. This is a coin where the queen's face is actually acceptable. There are so many queen face coins that are so far removed from England that it's quite overwhelming. This is a coin where it makes sense culturally. It also has a perfectly appropriate depiction of the royal arms. I have to score that a 10. Our second to last area is collectability. This is a coin that is beautifully done, 
but does not have the prestige of let's say a Libertad, Silver Eagle, or Maple Leaf. There is, however, tons of these made, seeing as you can get them in monster boxes, so their appeal may be there for stacking, so I scored a 7. Our last category is Uniqueness. This is a queen face coin with the royal arms. Having the queen on any coin is about as far from unique as you can get. The royal arms themselves are beautifully done, but also not quite unique, so I have to give it a 4. This brings our total to 43 out of 60. I will say that I believe this coin to be worthy of any collection and think that this is a great coin, but it does have its detractions as we've seen. The score ties it with the Wiener Neustadt of Austria, the Silver Pegasus of the British Virgin Islands, and the Australian Kangaroo. It also means that this is the end of our video. Until next time, please stay classy and current with the culture of currency.